Hi, this is Maginoni, and welcome to another edition of The Good, The Bad, and The Disappointing. Uh, let's start off with The Good. And that is Superior Spider-Man number 23. Now, the reason why I'm saying this is my good of the week is because this reminds me a lot of old-style Marvel uh, storytelling. In that, what you have is you have a main story, and then you have something sinister lurking in the background. Now, Marvel has done that. DC also does that, where they do have something sinister working. Uh, right now, the Avengers are classic for it, because they keep saying something dangerous, something is coming. But, what sets that apart is, in this case, what we have here is the Goblin storyline. And the Goblin War has been something that's been brewing for a very long time, and they just give us a little piece. And then while they give us a little taste of this, they throw in, okay, here's Spider-Man, he's fighting Venom. Okay, here's Spider-Man, and it looks like J.J. J's up to something with the Spider Slayers. And you know what, here's Peter Parker doing something horrible with Horizon Labs. And, you know, it's like, while they give us the main story, always they remind us in a page or two of the Goblin War. And the Goblin War is going to be coming soon to prepare for it and that's what I'm really appreciating about the storytelling now when you combine that with a spider-man it's slowly becoming unhinged you know he's making lots of attitude uh, judgment errors I should say you know like the way he's treating Flash Thompson the way he treats Mary Jane the people around him except for his new circle of people you know like for example, his girlfriend, even though Aunt May is an old circle, it's new in the sense that he's actually spending more time with her. He spent more time with her in these storylines, and he's probably done in a year or two's worth of you know Spider-Man issues. Now, when you combine all of that, he has another one of those mental breakdowns, and this time he does it in front of important people in his life, and that's. You know, it's these little things that, that are that slot sprinkling, and you can tell that this is something that, you know, when it when it un completely unravels and people fi finally figure out that this is not the Peter that they know and love, you know, you're just waiting for that moment, and every, and he's just dangling in front of us, and that's what I'm saying is this is what's really making this a really great issue. Now, this issue is also strong because of what he's Peter's also doing you know he's helping Flash Thompson but what's he even though he gave Flash Thompson legs he did it to separate the Venom and then once that whole Venom thing is done what is that robotic implant going to do to Flash Thompson later what is what are those nanobots going to do to Aunt May later you know it it's just this build up and Slot's doing such a great job of layering the stories and this has just been an outs one of the outstanding reads, especially when um, you look at the artwork. Uh, Ramos did Ramos is just fantastic. You know, I I just love the look of Venom. You know, that chaotic um, symbiote as it's like you know trying to get away. That kind of you know that whole it's that whole look that it has the the way the angles work the how sharp and pointed things are and how evil it, the character looks it's just everything uh, everything about this has been really really good and um, I, I, I hope he definitely continues okay now for the bad the bad is Guardians of the Galaxy now I really hate saying this but you know, part of the reason this is the bad is because of the timing of the issues. Infinity's over. Who cares? You know, this is old news now. I don't want to know what happens. Now, granted, you know, if I think if there were elements of this book that were stronger, I would really be on board. But it really does boil down for me it, to the artwork. The, I just can't stand it. It, you know, like for an example. You know, when you see characters drawn like this, and how you can easily identify the who they are, and you go to something like this, and you don't quite necessarily know who they are, except for, you know, Rocket Raccoon for sure. You know, or maybe you can tell because the helmet, 
you know, it's, you know, it's not really, it doesn't draw me in any longer. You know, like, Angel is supposed to be the super sexy, superheroish angel of death, and she doesn't look it. So, you know, it's missing key components. And for me, it's just not a very strong issue. Now, the even the writing's okay, but even then, it's it's basically you know it's like this. If I'm going to use the clean analogy, if somebody bakes a cake and they don't put the right ingredients in, it doesn't matter what good the frosting looks like. You know, it's still going to be crap. And that's what this is. It, you know, it's. But the thing here is, it's just, it's not even wrapped good enough on top of that. You know, maybe that's a bad analogy, but it just, to me, you know, like, this, the last few issues of the Guardians have been really poor, and it's just a shame. You know, we need, to, if, if Marvel really wants this book to take off, you know, they, they gotta put a better creative team on this thing to really draw people in, because I guarantee you, nobody's buying Guardians, you know, because of Angel looking the way she does in this book. Guarantee you. Okay. The disappointing is the Hulk annual. Now, this is disappointing for a couple of different reasons. One is, you know, they've been building up this animosity between Bruce Banner and Tony Stark, and it's that animosity where it's like Banner just gets pissed off at Tony, and because Tony keeps jumping like basically coming up with the inventions right before he does and I don't think they you know like uh, Parker did a great job at flushing that part of the story out you get a taste of it in the sense that they met in the past but they don't go forth and conquer on that in this story here what's going on is there's apparently somebody that they went to um, for like, uh, a symposium of sorts and then um, there's an I group of islands and then this person did experimentation for the Department of Defense on the, these islands and supposedly one of the islands has his lab. So basically they're going to this place and checking things out. Now f to me this basically was the indestructible Hulk all over again. So it, you know basically if you remember what the beginning was of the Hulk when they relaunched this was the Hulk landed and he went to the islands and he was fighting, you know, animal creatures, you know. And in this case, you know, granted they're not quite animal creatures, but yet they kind of look, you know, they don't look like quite like robots or monsters, you know. So I was just like, well, it, to me, it just seemed kind of like a rehash. And at the same time, they didn't really do enough of the banter that I was really hoping for between these two characters because you know Banner just wants to beat the living snot out of Tony and you know he they do such a great job at that anger that you know the, the way he looks the you know the way he clenches his fists and his facial expressions in the regular comic but it was just really sorely lacking in in this issue so to me, that's why there was a disappointment. Now, I don't expect this whole issue to be full of, you know, one-upping each other and things like that, because it's supposed to be a team-up book. But I think a little bit, just a teeny-weeny bit, would have been great. A little bit more than what was actually in here. Anyways, that's my good, the bad, the disappointing. I would love to hear what you guys thought was the good, the bad, the disappointing, especially since there was actually a lot of good this week. Um, I'll cover some of the other books that I thought were really good in my regular reviews. So, like the Facebook link, Crunchyroll Anime Reviews. I'll have more stuff later, so until next.